Good afternoon. Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, joining us for uh, our first State of the District. I'd uh, like to uh, call upon the Reverend Jennifer Reddell, uh, the new rector at uh, Church of the Epiphany, to uh, please lead us in the invocation. May the spirit who called us to love our neighbors renew the ties of mutual regard which form our civic life. Send us honest and able leaders. Enable us to eliminate poverty, prejudice, and oppression. That peace may prevail with righteousness and justice with order. And that men and women from different cultures and with different talents may find with one another the fulfillment of their humanity. Amen. Thank you for that uh, invocation. I'd like to now call upon Talent Unlimited. I have the privilege of representing them at the Julia Richmond Education Complex, and uh, they will be leading us in the national anthem. so very lucky to have such talented students uh, in this district and in this city and we must do everything we can uh, to support them. Uh, we are also very lucky to be joined by our uh, Congress member, uh, Carol Maloney. She is our leader on the east side. Uh, it's been a pleasure to work with her on so many different things related to our waterfronts and fighting the Marine Transfer Station. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our uh, Congresswoman, Carol Maloney. I thank you, Ben, for that uh, introduction and for running for office and getting elected. And I, I uh, also want to, to thank uh, the wonderful group that just spoke. Uh, I think it's one of the most uh, beautiful um, uh, examples of the Star Spangled Banner that I've ever heard from Talented Unlimited. Uh, it was original, it was energetic, it was uh, authentic, it was inspiring. It makes you, gives you energy. And it's sort of like I've, how I feel about Ben. He's come to this community with the same originality and authentic drive, new ideas, and is one of the strongest links in that link that holds us all together as a community working together for our beautiful, wonderful neighborhoods. It's in the east side where we first passed the anti-sliver building. 
because so many people want to overbuild and how we have to work so hard to pass historic districts. There's always such a huge pushback. But I, I must say that uh, we are stronger when we work together, just like this music was, was more beautiful like, because they work together. Usually, I hear the Star Spangled Banner at least five times a day because every meeting starts with it. But, <laughs> but this was the first time I've, I've seen a group sing it so beautifully. And I, I feel that uh, uh, they're a symbol of how we're all stronger when we work together. I just want to briefly mention three areas that I've worked closely with Ben and I've been able to see his intelligence and his drive and his creativity. Uh, the first is the East River Esplanade, which uh, Jessica Lappin and I uh, started. Uh, and it's going to be a green necklace on our neighborhood. Together, we worked to find out uh, and got a study doing and documented that it's going to cost $110 million to keep the Esplanade from falling into the river. But Ben got the Rockefeller University to agree to invest in the Esplanade, and he got the city council to commit to give $35 million. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. And together, he brought uh, new energy and charm and intelligence to our fight in, in fighting the East 91st Street MTS. What a disaster. It is the worst public policy that I have ever seen in my whole life. And it, uh, if we would just continue what we're doing now, we would save hundreds of millions of dollars. So forget every argument just on the economy alone or the economics of it, it makes no sense. So if they build this thing, Ben and the community, we will tear it down. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, after 9-11, after we saw how very valuable using our waterfront is, uh, not only for beauty, but to save lives. Uh, ferry services came in and saved many people, removing them from the disaster. And working with the New York delegation, I was successful in getting over $4 million in federal funding and service to the East River, Brooklyn, and Queens. And I, I'm thrilled that the mayor has just announced three new routes in Ben's district. I'm sure Ben had a lot to do to making that happen, just as he has in so many other ways. And I will want to conclude by saying, with Ben's help, we are going to open the Second Avenue Subway in 2016. It's just been planned for 60 years. He gets elected, it gets opened. So I gotta say, thank you, Ben. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And I, I wanna recognize our wonderful controller our, and Trish, she's everywhere. I've already seen her at two meetings, uh, our, our wonderful public advocate. And thank the community. I see so many wonderful friends that have given so much to the life, to preserve the life and help people here on the east side. I look forward to meeting all of you at some point. Thank you for being here today supporting Ben. If we can give our Congresswoman another round of applause for all of her amazing service. We, we stand on the shoulders of giants and it's a lot easier to get things done when somebody's already uh, laid the way for you. Um, I'd like to now introduce our uh, uh, public advocate for the city of New York. I've had a pleasure to work with her over the past year on trying to do something like bridging the digital divide, something we've been trying to do for years as a society. Now the president wants to do it, the governor wants to do it, the mayor wants to do it, but I've been proud to work with her to advocate that as part of the Time Warner Comcast merger that uh, we get free universal broadband in NYCHA as well as affordable access, and she'll tell you more about it, but I, without further ado, I'd like to welcome public advocate Leticia James. Before I begin my remarks about Councilmember Kalos, let me just say, um, Councilmember Kalos, thank you for having this um, event at Memorial Sloan Catering uh, Theater or Auditorium. This is the hospital that uh, saved my mother, and I am forever indebted to this hospital. And for all of those who are living with cancer and for all of those who are battling cancer, this is a great institution. It's an honor and a privilege to join with the elected officials from the Upper East Side who can continue to support this wonderful uh, hospital that has saved countless number of lives, so thank you. 
I want to thank Congresswoman Maloney for her kind words and for all that she has done in regards to women's rights. Uh, of course, our controller Scott Stringer for all that he has done to save all of us money. And of course, the newest addition to the family, Assemblywoman C. Wright. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Right. <laughs> Councilmember Kalos has been a fine addition to the single to the City Council, a dynamic, prolific, and erudite member of the City Council who has introduced more pieces of legislation than any other member of the City Council. He has joined me in addressing a number of issues in the City of New York, including but not limited uh, to the possible merger of Time Warner and Comcast, making sure that we have net neutrality and making sure that its impact on small businesses is minimal and making sure that we go, uh, that we address the digital divide which currently exists not only in this city but in this nation. He, is a join, he has joined me in addressing the issue of sexual assaults on college campuses all throughout the City of New York and he has been a progressive voice on issues such as protecting and strengthening rent regulations um, as we go to Albany to ensure that they are protected in, the, in this legislative session. In addition to that, the council member has been a great friend in advocating for more arts and culture in our public schools as was evidenced by the wonderful organization that just sang to us uh, just briefly, or just earlier. Um, he has done so much in one year and I know that he will do more in the year to come. Uh, the best is yet to come for Councilmember Kalos. Thank you for voting my friend into office, and I look forward to working with him in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Public Advocate James, for joining us and for your advocacy on all levels. I'd like to uh, now introduce our uh, controller. Most of us know him best as our borough president for Manhattan, Scott Stringer. He actually gave me my start by putting me on community board eight. He fought re for reforms in Albany, uh, something that I uh, have always tried to follow. Uh, the same reforms we were able to try to get in the uh, city council with our rules reforms. And uh, now he's our controller and has been fighting to make sure that our universal pre-K is safe, making sure that every single dollar we spend is in the right place. And without further ado, our controller, Scott Stringer. Wow, this is great. I feel like I'm at a CB6 and CB8 meeting. I'm back. It's great to, see, it's really great to see everybody, and it's always great to follow Congresswoman Maloney, Public Advocate Tish James, and most importantly, I think the reason we're here today is not just to stay, take stock of the council and council member Kalos's role in his first year, but I think it's also a commitment from all the people in this room just how important it is that you come to events like this because the truth is a lot of people either can't come out on a night like day like this or won't. And so the activists here today really reflect the broader community. And I just want to say that I first really got to know Ben Kalos when he would come out at 7 a.m. and campaign for me on 96th Street and Lexington Avenue. Uh, couldn't imagine why this young guy would spend this whole summer doing this. He'd wave to me, I'd wave to him. And uh, of course, you remember when we had community board reform, just because you campaigned for me didn't mean you were gonna get on the community board. But it soon became clear that this was a young man who loved public service. He got on the community board, he made a big difference. He worked as chief of staff to Jonathan Bing, one of our most respected elected officials. But what I liked about him is he had his own vision and ideology, and that's what prompts you to run for office. He believes in open government, and he believes in reform and progressive change. And he has pushed buttons in the city council. He has not been one of those members that sits in the back and waits his turn. He has been front and center on issues that I think are very powerful, whether it's merger, or thinking about ways we can use data to deliver better services for our constituents. He believes in the waterfront, and he believes in bringing people together. He's a council member, quite frankly, that represents his district very well, but that's only half the job. The other half of the job is can you build broad coalition? Can you think about public policy and link all the neighborhoods together by any measure his first year has been that kind of agenda. So I give myself great credit. <laughs> for finding him way back when. Uh, 
typical citywide politician, me, 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 no, just kidding. Um, but I really am proud to be here uh, to talk about him and advocate. And I want to just pledge to all of you that we're going to work very closely with him on a lot of the open data issues that we face in the council because this is about how we assess how well government is doing. So to everyone here, it's really great to be here because I don't get to spend as much time community board member to community board member. It's a big city out there. I'm going to Queens, but I wouldn't miss uh, seeing the mayor of 79th Street and so many other, uh, everyone knows what I'm talking about, right? So, uh, but it, I would not miss this for the world. So thank you all very much. And Ben, you did a great job. And like Tish said, the best is yet to come. Thank you very much. I'd like to make sure we acknowledge our new member of the team, our assembly member, uh, Rebecca Seawright, uh, who joined us today and uh, also helped invite a lot of the uh, citywide elected officials that we saw here today. So uh, let's give one more round of applause to uh, Scott Stringer for uh, all of his great service as controller, as well as, uh, in all honesty, giving me my, my start. So thank you. Um, I'd like to now call on a uh, constituent I have gotten to know over the past couple of months. Um, you all may remember the inauguration. I committed to the arts. Uh, we, we actually had a dance number, but the stage uh, couldn't accommodate the ballet this time. Uh, so this time we'll just be doing the, the, the song and uh, poetry. So I'd like to uh, call upon uh, Miss Lorraine Brown uh, for a reading of Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. Thank, thank goodness he didn't ask me to do the dance number. <laughs> but good afternoon, and I want to thank everyone for coming out, and especially Representative Maloney and the new assembly person, Mrs. C. Wright, and Controller Stringer, and Tis James to honor Ben Carlos. He's doing a wonderful job, and we need to make sure that he stays in office. I am honored and privileged that Councilmember Carlos, whom I admire and respect because he lives his truth and his values, and he has the values of a statesman and not a politician. He has asked that I recite this poem by Dr. Angelo. Dr. Angelo has inspired and guided many women and leaders with her words of thoughtfulness, kindness, and wisdom. All I ask is that I honor her legacy with my resuscitation today. Still, I rise. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I got oil wells pumping in my living room, just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hopes singing high, still I'll rise. Do you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard, cause I laugh like I got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words, you may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like air, I'll rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, 
I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. Thank you. What an amazing reading uh, by Mrs. Brown. If we could just give her one last round of applause. Good afternoon. You all know me better than that one more time. Good afternoon. That's more like it. Thank you to this afternoon's program participants and to my staff, interns, and volunteers, without which today would not have been possible. More than a year ago, 500 residents of this district joined me as I was sworn in as your city council member. Thank you to those of you who were there then, those of you who are here today, and all of you who have been there all along the way. Since that time, one year, one month, eight days later, much has been accomplished. My team and I have been honored to assist more than 1,000 residents with problems ranging from potholes to evictions. As chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations, I've chaired 14 hearings, passed seven bills, and two resolutions through the committee. I'm proud to stand before you as a lawmaker who has passed two resolutions and four bills into law. I've held 20 First Fridays, policy nights, and attended over 100 community meetings. I've secured $35 million for the East River Esplanade and distributed $2.7 million in participatory budgeting. With two years, 10 months, 19 days, 10 hours, 30 minutes, and roughly 40 seconds left, we've got so much more to get done and precious little time. Democracy depends on government that is transparent, open, and accountable, that empowers residents to have the information, access, and ability to play a meaningful role in the decision-making process. These are your streets, your parks, your light, your air, and your city. If it wasn't clear already, this office belongs to you, and it is open to you. On the first Friday of every month from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., residents are welcome to join me in the office to discuss issues that matter to them. Attendance varies from a high of 50 to an average of 10 or 20, but I hold them each month because of how important it is to open government to provide a chance for residents to meet me face to face. Democracy only works with your participation. Thank you to residents like Mel Lyman, Elizabeth Ryman, and Carol Hughes, who have been there each month and inspire me to keep going. For those who join us at First Fridays, you may know that if anyone has a good idea for policy or legislation, they get invited to policy nights to mobilize people who want to create change. With such precious little time to get so much done, the only way to get more done than I otherwise could alone is to empower residents with the tools and support they need from my office to help advocate for and set policy. Ms. Lorraine Brown, who did a beautiful reading of Still I Rise, has been working with me to close the digital divide in public housing, a project that came from Policy Night. Ms. Myrna LeBeau, concerned for mental health of public school students following acts of violence in schools, far too many to name, advocated for more school counselors, and I was proud to sponsor legislation that became law requiring reporting by the Department of Education. I've hosted monthly forums on topics from safer streets to emergency preparedness so you can speak directly to city agencies. But opening my office wasn't enough. I've decided to be even more proactive to come to you. I launched a mobile office where my social work team goes into the community with hours at Stanley Isaacs uh, and Holmes Towers, Robbins Plaza and Lenox Hill, and Roosevelt Island. If you know of a community that needs my help with a location to host us, please let me know so we can expand our services. 
And in order to make it even easier, I launched Ben in Your Building, where I'll come to your home if you can organize 10 neighbors uh, whenever is most convenient to you. Since then, I've had the pleasure of meeting with condo and cooperative boards, tenants associations, and concerned citizens in their apartments to learn from them and their neighborhoods what's most important. I've also decided to give you $1 million through participatory budgeting, which allows you to propose projects and vote directly on how your tax dollars get spent. Last year, the community voted to bring us bus countdown clocks to the downtown M31 and Crosstown buses, and improvements to NYCHA, including accessibility, new appliances, gardens, and security. Most people do not know what a council member does. Uh, some council members don't even know what council members do. <laughs> so I started an education campaign, visiting street fairs in the district to talk to you about how my office can help. Through outreach like this, I've been able to discuss with you many of the issues of importance to you and your families. Issues that I plan to address today, like the Marine Transfer Station, open spaces, safer streets, education, affordable housing, and sustainable development. The top issue in the district remains the ill-conceived Marine Transfer Station, a garbage dump in a residential neighborhood. I grew up across the street from it when it was active, have been a member of Asphalt Green, and ran for office in large part so I could help fight it. In my first months in office, I worked with Pledge to Protect, who tabled outside the event today, so thank you for that, to reframe the narrative. Rather than fighting over where to spread harm, we advocated for investing in our future. Reduce, reuse, recycle. According to Pledge to Protect, Talking Trash Report, we have 22,056 residents, 1,059 children, 6,755 minority residents, 1,173 units of public housing, and six schools near this one station, more than all six other stations combined. If the sandy flooding of the FDR wasn't enough, we showed that the station was being built in a floodplain. We could save $93 million a year if we went from recycling just 15% to the Los Angeles rate of 45%. You can take the pledge and read the report at pledge, the number two, protectnyc.org. This year, we built a coalition with activists from Brooklyn who are also facing marine transfer station in their residential communities. All summer, we held rallies in front of Asphalt Green, elderly residents and activists like Joan Cavanaugh, Barbara Hyman, and Lorraine Johnson got arrested for the first time in their lives. <laughs> During budget hearings, I exposed the fact that the estimated capital costs for the station quintupled since the project began, jumping from $44 million to $215 million. I commissioned a report from the Independent Budget Office that showed that it will cost New Yorkers three times as much to dispose of trash through the Marine Transfer Station than the current system of sending our trash to New Jersey. With $600 million, that's two-thirds of a billion, over the next 20 years. I've used this information to call on the administration to stop this Marine Transfer Station for the good of all New Yorkers. I support the proposal to move the ramp away from the center of asphalt greens fields, but I remain ever vigilant and hopeful that logic, reason, and fact will win over politics and that the dump can finally be stopped. <laughs> the DEC will soon be opening a public information session to gather information from everyone in the community about air quality. And so when that happens, I'm counting on every single one of you, all of your neighbors, everybody you know all over the city, to speak up, speak out, and explain why the neighborhood with some of the worst air quality in the city should not be getting a dump in, its, in the middle of a neighborhood and a children's playground. As I run or walk along the East River Esplanade and through Carl Scherz Park, so many of you have stopped me to share the importance of open space and revitalizing our waterways. When Rockefeller University announced it would be expanding their campus over the FDR, 
as part of a deal from a generation ago, I was pleased to follow the community board and Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer in working with President Mark Tessier Levine to provide millions to support infrastructure and a redesign with a first of its kind million dollar trust to maintain their area of the waterfront forever. <laughs> Rockefeller University through Vice President Tim O'Connor will be representing hospitals and research universities along the Esplanade on the board of Friends of the East River Esplanade, a nonprofit that I have designated as the conservancy to be the caretaker to our waterfront. Thank you to its founder and leader, Jennifer Ratner, as well as other volunteers for tabling today and your ongoing service. Coming into office, I knew the Parks Department projected a need to invest $115 million in repairing our esplanade to avoid having to spend $430 million to rebuild it. I worked hard to secure $35 million in funding in partnership with Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney as co-chairs of the East River Esplanade Task Force to repair and revitalize our space. I will continue to work with agencies to invest in our waterfront on piers that have fallen into disrepair and add in concessions that can generate revenue and most importantly, make our waterfront a destination. I have long advocated for service, ferry service along with Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Ferry service is yet another promise for my platform which I will be which will be coming to the East River and Roosevelt Island by 2018, as announced by Mayor Bill de Blasio in his state of the city. We are taking back our waterfront so that it can become a center of transportation, commerce, and recreation once again. I'm also working to make streets safer. I support Vision Zero with the goal that no member of our community should ever lose their life in a preventable traffic collision. Pedestrians, cyclists, and motorists must all be able to use our streets safely. I used my first newsletter to ask 60,000 residents to share their knowledge of the most dangerous intersections and desired street fixes and improvements. I compiled information into a Livable Streets report and I'm now putting it into action. It's available for download at benkalos.com slash livable dash streets. In the past year, I've held three forums on street safety. During my campaign and once in office, I've had thousands of conversations, many concerning commercial bicyclists and a frustration that complaints have gone unheard. In response, I launched the Commercial Bike Safety Program to empower every resident to help improve safety for pedestrians concerned about delivery bikes. The program has a few easy steps. We canvassed every restaurant in the district and held a forum for over 100 of them where the Department of Transportation distributed free safety vests, bells, and lights. All three of them are required anytime you see a commercial cyclist. More safety vests. If you see or receive a bike delivery from a person with no safety vest displaying a business name and identification number, report it to the business 301 and to me. Report unsafe biking. If you see wrong way or unsafe biking, remember the business name, identification number from the safety vest, then report it to the store, 311, and to me. The most important item here is your communication to the restaurant. The power of your dollars far outweighs the power of government to these stores. Enforcement. When you call 301, DOT and NYPD will be notified and will take appropriate steps to resolve the issue. The program has already had success in curbing unsafe behavior, spreading awareness, and increasing the use of safety vests. City bike and bike lanes are coming to our district in coming years. I'll work with residents and city agencies to ensure we have a voice in the locations and the implementation process so that it is as safe as possible. I hear a lot about the M79, and living at 80th in York, I experience it too. Recently, the M79 won the Pokey Award for the slowest bus in the city by the Strathpangers campaign. I am working to make archival bus time, JPS information of these buses public so we can hold the MTA accountable. I also invested in bus clocks so you will be able to see when your bus is going to arrive and plan accordingly. We've all suffered through the construction of the Second Avenue subway 
and I've done my best to support businesses along the corridor through advocacy for funding in the budget to support, as well as supporting them with my own dollars. If you're going out for a meal or ordering in, please shop Second Avenue. I'm proud to announce the Second Avenue subway is on track for completion on December 31st, 2016. While we wait, I've authored legislation that would allow you to hail a New York City yellow or green cab easily on your phone. Since I propose that the idea has become so popular that the cities of Los Angeles and Chicago have already adopted it, I look forward to making it easier for everyone to hail a cab on their phone and get where they're going fast. You are my ears, you are my eyes, and we can only improve transportation if we work together. So please tell me locations that need improvements and again, visit benkalos.com slash livable streets, or just give me a call. We have some of the best schools in the city, and as a graduate of the Bronx High School of Science, I am committed to a world-class public education. <laughs> that clapping started with one of my fellow alumni. Uh, I've been trying to visit all 29 schools that I have in my district. Uh, some have even visited me. If I haven't visited your school yet, please contact my office, let me know. My goal is to support our principals, teachers, parents, and students providing resources and advocacy for what they need. Far too many children go hungry every day. That is why I helped lead the Lunch for Learning campaign to provide free school lunches to every student. We won free school lunch for middle schools. I will continue fight for all 1.1 million students to have a free salad bar breakfast after the bell, and lunch. With hunger rampant throughout the city, I'm committed to making sure our city children grow up healthy from cradle to career with a fair chance at the American dream. Last year, I invested $1 million in science, technology, engineering, and math, STEM, education. Through my discretionary funds to improve our labs, computers, and equipment, our children must be prepared for jobs in what has become a STEM-based economy. I learned how to code growing up, and it opened up a world of possibilities. Every child deserves that chance. Education is also about learning to be a good citizen. That is why I've made a special effort to connect our schools with our local democracy. This year, I pioneered a mock voting program for children at PS290, offered civics classes to schools in our district, and gave a summer reading challenge for dedicated students to read five or more books. I'm introducing a council member for a day essay contest for students grades five through eight. My young adult voter registration bill would guarantee that high school seniors get voter registration forms in their classrooms and at graduation and encourage them to register. But as they get older, students are being crushed under a mountain of debt. During my campaign, the New York Times endorsed my plan to create free CUNY right here in New York City. For every year a young graduate works and stays, they would be forgiven 10% of their loans. There's momentum for this idea. President Obama called for two years of free community college, and Governor Cuomo has called for low-income SUNY graduates to have loan payments covered for the first two years after graduation. We must, we must invest in students so they can power our city's economy. Instead of crushing debt, students deserve opportunity. And it's time to take New York City back for our tenants and residents. What if finding an affordable apartment wasn't impossible? What if rents didn't skyrocket every year? What if our seniors and our disabled residents didn't have to choose between medication and paying rent? Last year, I was proud to help lead a coalition that won a historic low 1% increase on one-year leases for rent-regulated apartments. I will keep fighting for a rent freeze in 2015. I was proud to fight side-by-side -side with tenants at Neckerbacher Plaza like Rita Popper and Harry Molise to protect former Mitchell Lama residents from being downsized to smaller apartments. The city heard our voices and now seniors are no longer being removed from one bedrooms 
and moved into two zero bedroom apartments. Recently, I introduced a bill to protect tenants from being placed on a blacklist simply for being named in a housing court proceeding. And last year, the City Council successfully raised the maximum income for residents receiving senior citizen rent increase exemptions and disabled rent increase exemptions. And we must continue to develop responsibly once the Second Avenue subway is built. Any new building must contain affordable units. We must fix our zoning code so that tall skyscrapers for the few do not block light and air for the many. The future of our community depends on neighbors working together for responsible community-driven development. Our district can only make progress if our city as a whole moves forward. Since taking office, I have made it a mission to move government out of the back rooms and into plain sight. As chair of the Committee on Governmental Operations and the City Council, I have fought to reform the most entrenched dysfunction. Though changing government takes time, just one year later, we have some results to report. The City Council passed rules reform to make it fair and accountable with legislation that will be online for you to do what you wish. I identified $4 billion in potential waste in contract overruns. I fought corruption at the Board of Elections, fighting for them to post jobs publicly instead of just using them as patronage, and won their adoption of a conflict of interest policy. I also successfully advocated for a transparent process for appointing three new commissioners who swore under oath to instate these key reforms. Finally, I passed... Finally, I passed four laws to improve transparency, efficiency, and participation in our city. The city record online bill will make public meetings and contracting notices available to you online instead of locked away in a file cabinet. Online voter guide bill saves the city millions of dollars by allowing the city to publish a voter guide online, which has already started this year. Agency-based voter registration will help New Yorkers participate by making it mandatory that more city agencies assist people in registering to vote. And an open law introduced by Councilmember Brad Lander, which I co-sponsored, will put the law online so you can actually see the laws by which you are governed without an expensive Lexus or Westlaw subscription. <laughs> when government is efficient, honest, and technologically sound, it is easier for residents to have a say, get help, and get ahead. I hope to see you again soon, far before next year's State of the District, at a First Friday, Policy night, mobile hours, been in your building, cooking with Kalos, street fair, <laughs> participatory budgeting, forum, community meeting, or just saying hi or stopping by to say hello. One year ago, I promised to faithfully discharge the duties of council member to the best of my abilities. Today, I promise to continue to fight as hard as I can to make the changes we want to see in our streets, our neighborhoods, and in our city. But the state of our district depends on not just me, but on you, because together we can ensure it keeps getting better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Talent Unlimited will come up and continue singing as folks are uh, headed out. And feel free to please join us for some refreshments in the lobby. And we'll also have a photo line for any of you who didn't get a chance to get a picture with me last year.
My tummy's turning and I'm feeling kind of homesick Too much pressure and I'm nervous It's when the taxi man turns on the radio And a Jay-Z song was on And the Jay-Z song was on And the Jay-Z song was on So I put my hands up to play my song The birds fly fly away Nodding my head like yeah Moving my hips like yeah So I put my hands up to play my song You know I'm gonna be okay Party in the USA tonight.